Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone welcome back to online NPTEL course on structure form and architecture the synergy. Today we are at lecture number 17 and it is all about the compressive structures. Before starting this lecture uh, if we just recall our previous discussions that we have discussed about different structural arrangements and as well as different materials and then also we discussed different kind of force acting on structure. So, based on that like we can classify uh, a particular structural element into category, but we have to remember one thing that may be a structural arrangement will have multiple such you know uh, force resisting power means the structure may also take compression as well as tension, but looking at the predominance the most of the elements of that arrangement is taking which kind of force and resisting against which kind of applied load is basically the basis of making this classification. So, today in this lecture we will be knowing about the structure where the maximum component or the major component of that arrangement will deal with the compression uh, force and that is why we call it compressive structures. So, let us start that. So, at the beginning that I would like to show you this uh, photograph that also we discussed when we uh, discussed about the uh, evolution of uh, the structural system uh, from prehistoric age to the modern age and the you know uh, that present day. And this is the example of the stone hinge where it is basically a megalithic structures where uh, they used this particular stone slab up standing and they support this particular stone on top of it. So, looking at this uh, the behavior of this vertical stone basically all the dead load okay, of uh, this all the load of this particular stone being transferred through this stone slab and it is transferring to the ground. So, in this case this kind of arrangement where this uh, external force is trying to compress any object, we know that this behavior is called compression and that stress developed here is again the compressive stress. So, we can say that this element like this particular wall you may say uh, or maybe the extended column we can also say uh, depending on the position they are basically the compressive structures. And this uh, is uh, like a very basic structural arrangement, the wall slab kind of relationship is there, but in now uh, you know in the modern age also we also you know go for this kind of compressive structures. Basically uh, we will see in the subsequent slides that for compressive structures we, uh, you use the machinery or concrete as material and uh, the use of this kind of compressive structure was so uh, prominent in Greek and Roman architecture and later on even in the Gothic with the flying batteries and all. So, we will have some uh, slides on that we will discuss uh, to that. Now, to start with the structure on which compressive load are applied along the length of the structure. So, we also discussed uh, in the lecture that the principal axis the major axis based on that whatever the load applied on that. So, uh, the material okay, uh, depending on the density and the strength and the hardness they will react to that. So, in this case also this is the major axis in this case this, uh, uh, this is the main axis and the load applied to it is basically uh, giving some compression. So, all these particles if we consider at that micro level that they are trying to compress they are coming close to each other. 
So, basically compression uh, taking place and that um, in kind of structure compressive structure we predominantly see that the load is compressive load. Then along with that uh, buckling is one of the major problem that occurs in the compressive structure which depends on the bending stiffness and length. What exactly the buckling? So, if you can recall that we also discussed that whenever like you have a long column, so uh, applying load on it initially it will try to compress, but if it is having higher length and consider in comparison to the cross section. So, also we referred that as your slenderness ratio. So, basically that is uh, the ratio between the cross section and the length of the structure. So, if it is uh, too uh, narrow, suppose the length is quite uh, you know much more higher than the cross section, then applying the load okay, along with the compression it will give uh, a bending. So, this is called buckling. So, for uh, compressive structure this is a problem if you have uh, you know poor in this slenderness ratio. When compression load acts on short column, so basically that time crushing happens. So, it will try to compress and more and when it is applied to the long column, then buckling will happen. So, what is short column and long column? So, short column is depending on the height and then uh, long column is again uh, is basically the ratio. When we have uh, like uh, uh, quite much higher length compared to the cross section of that, then we refer that as a long column and short column is uh, just uh, where we get something you know uh, the proportion between the length of the column and the cross section of the column they are not that much you know having the ratio higher than that. So, in that case suppose uh, roughly consider so we can consider this as a very short column and maybe uh, something like that uh, this is little bit a long column. So, you can see that though the cross section of these two uh, thermocol that I have uh, is same, but the length that differs. Now, the action of crushing when we apply load on top of it, it will try to compress and then this is basically uh, result in for the higher load, it will uh, go for the crushing. So, whenever we uh, do the test with uh, the you know concrete block, the compressive stress. So, we will develop uh, like we will see those kind of uh, development of uh, cracks and it crashed. But when uh, we apply for a uh, like a long column where again I am repeating that when the length is quite uh, higher like proportionally higher than the cross section of that. So, then applying load you can uh, if you see carefully that when I apply load on it. So, it will try to bend. So, first it compress then it will try to bend. So, this particular uh, property is uh, called the buckling. So, if uh, our material is not having good steepness and also buckling failure uh, will be the problem. So, we have to take care of that. Now, uh, we all know so just to have a recap what is compression? Compression is the ability of a material to prevent uh, structure against pushing load. So, whenever we push the load both the cases one is from the up uh, upright direction and we can also put from this uh, you know horizontal direction. So, these are the compression. So, then uh, based on this initial discussion what we found. So, whenever we have uh, say uh, uh, short column. So, then if we apply load it will get shortened and then uh, finally, like uh, it will crush. So, crushing uh, is your phenomena, but when you have something like this where uh, maybe uh, you have very thin cross section and then this is something like uh, a very long column. So, when you apply load on that it will try to bend. So, buckling will happen. So, depending on that uh, position and that particular principle. So, we have to select our structure accordingly, so that it will uh, sustain again the applied load. Now, uh, to discuss more on that the simple compression occurs when the particles of material pushed against each other that we say that they are trying to come close to each other. Uh, a supporting column is one of the example which is basically 
under the compression, uh, compression uh, you know compressive shortening is proportional to the load per unit area. So, and that is why you now buckling will happen when you have uh, like very small area. So, then uh, stress will be uh, you know uh, even more. So, we know that it is a by a. So, definitely cross section will play a role. So, compressive shortening takes place along the longitudinal axis yeah definitely like when it applied. So, most commonly it is to be done through the center of this particular uh, member. Now, here we have to give images. So, uh, it is basically showing uh, what we said that in a compressive stress that how cracks develop. So, after compression it will go to the ultimate stress that it can hold and then after that it will break. But the other case if you see this is a kind of example of a long column where you have a like quite more length compared to the cross section and then on applying load. So, it will have a buckling. So, in this it is your buckling here it is crossing. Now, move forward. Uh, to the material that uh, uh, being used for that one is the masonry. So, masonry here this is a representative picture where brick uh, being uh, laid on the cements and mortar, but uh, like we also discussed previously that masonry can also be done with the block stone block. Uh, the mortar can be lime surki mortar or nowadays after invention of cement it is cements and mortar. Concrete without reinforcement. Uh, here it is uh, basically I am talking about the plain, uh, plain concrete. So, plain concrete is having good compressive strain. So, if you use a concrete block, so it can really give you uh, enough strength the compressive strains. But uh, you know sometimes you know for uh, like uh, some high rise structure of where the span is more or the height is more, then probably simple concrete will not uh, really take that because then you know as we discussed that because of the centerness ratio because of the height of the structure. So, buckling will occur. So, then for in order to prevent that uh, bending ok we also need some support to control to resist again the tension developed during this bending. For that this concrete is not good and that is why we add steel to it as reinforcement which is good a steel as a material which is good for uh, taking tensile load and then uh, the combination of both can really do some good uh, you know uh, support that we uh, that can give us good support to make uh, more number of story building and make our structure more shape. So, that is why the machinery and concrete they very good are uh, in compression, but poor in tension. So, uh, use of steel is uh, for that reason to you know uh, make a balance between carrying compression which will be taken care of by concrete itself and then uh, we the tension will be taken care of the steel member. Now, if you see the application of that then um, as I mentioned in the beginning of this lecture that in Greek and Roman temples and the assembly halls. So, use of these compressive structures are very predominant. Nowadays, also you can see those few of those historic buildings still they are uh, you know uh, of that you know standing and uh, you can actually refer to them. Then after that also in the Romanesque and the Gothic architecture where normally you know for the charge and cathedral uh, they use these as a buttress and all. So, these are very predominant. Later on like it is shifting to was the steel or the reinforced concrete structure. So, not purely the compression is basically then uh, taking care of the other you know force as well. Now, if you broadly classify uh, like compressive structure. So, like we can have wall, arch, flying buttress, barrel vault and dome, but again I am telling you like looking at the major elements of that system which is acting in the compression load or which is resisting that compressive force uh, based on that this classification has been done. But at the same time if you take example of the dome, so dome also it is not really that uh, everywhere will get this compression. Uh, uh, mainly you know when we discuss about the dome we will find that uh, this compression is basically 
trekking uh, for this meridian and when we are taking uh, care of this you know hoops so tension and compression both will develop we will come to that only uh, uh, when we have this kind of system uh, in detail. So, come to the wall like uh, wall may be used as a building um, envelope or it may be a load bearing wall or may be a boundary wall, but basic principle is that like the load is transferred vertically through the axis and this particular portion is in compression. So, uh, in this case uh, there is no such tension, so majorly it is in compression, so it is uh, one example of the compressive structure. Here also if you make load bearing uh, you know structure the load of this slab is transferred to the wall to the foundation. So, this is another example that already we discussed earlier, again we are uh, you know taking this example of the load bearing wall. Uh, normally being used like uh, in uh, you know some of the old buildings where you have a higher thickness of the wall and wall will take the maximum uh, load because uh, then now we shape to the frame structure where uh, the concrete columns and beams are primarily taking the load and walls are being used just to make the partition. So, in this case wall act as a compressive structures and taking the load. Now, this is another example like uh, this is uh, the load bearing structure made. So, the slab the load of the slab uh, being carried uh, uh, by this wall and this transfer to the you know the foundation. So, this is another example of the compressive structure and wall. Come to the arch it is very useful uh, you know uh, structure and uh, in the use of this arch is uh, basically spread in various type of uh, construction. So, it here you can see this is just uh, being used for a you know bridge and in many historical building that has been used to create the huge door or sometimes the corridor. So, in this case also like if you take the arch uh, as a component we will also have a detailed um, lecture um, in upcoming uh, you know uh, detailed lecture. Uh, planned for this whole course on arch, there will uh, try to know different kind of arch construction uh, and all. But in this case, uh, in short, if I say that you know, in the arch form, it is mostly a semicircular in this particular form and uh, it is symmetrical. So, the main stone that also we refer as a keystone. So, whatever the load applied on the surface, so uh, they actually you know. Uh, spread over that and you know that create compression and they transfer it to the support. So, uh, this is the overall transfer of the load to the arch and the load that being carried out is fully compression. So, in this uh, like arch is the very good example where uniform compression uh, we can see and there is no bending on that. And sometimes you know uh, the second line of this particular slide that little or no tension it depends. Suppose if we link this particular uh, arch the support. So, uh, you know basically if I try to put the pressure. So, you just do this uh, thing like you just try to make one arch okay, and you just use something the rubber band or something like this. So, the moment you put the pressure so it will try to be flat and then it will uh, you know elongate. So, basically so when you press it so it will elongate. So, here tension will be developed, but in this case uh, there is no such attachment. So, it is full compression. So, sometimes also uh, you know in some truss you know where arch being used. So, we get this particular tension. This is again another uh, beautiful example of the arch how it being formed and and the main beauty is with the symmetry and that is why like it will also make uh, the structure you know in equilibrium. So, that how they distribute it uh, in uh, the supporting structure. Now, come to the other category that we mentioned in the gothic um, cathedral and all the use of the flying buttress. So, basically uh, it is something like you have the main structure and someone is giving you the support. Okay. So, something like that one has to hold it. So, the load of the roof and the wall is being transferred to the uh, flyer and then you have another supporting wall 
uh, which together making the flying buttress, it is again in compression. So, it is something uh, you know you can say that uh, having relation with the wall and but you have a connection with the fire so that it will transfer the load. So, you can see here also like uh, how this particular you know load bearing structure being again supported the huge mass and with the flyers. So, the flying batteries in a gothic cathedral transfer force of compression from roof and wall down to foundation. So, basically whatever the load is there that to transfer to the flyer and then go down, go down and finally transfer to the foundation. So, this is very important um, kind of you know compressive structure being used in those uh, cathedral and all. Now, in this case this is uh, another example like earlier it was just a symbolic one. Now, you can see uh, that uh, in this cathedral how, how it is been, been made. So, this is the main structure and then now you have this flyer and then down to that this is connected with your buttress. Okay, so, how it is being supporting this building. So, this is again very useful uh, you know compressive structure being used and if you uh, just uh, consider uh, like the building materials. So, basically um, either stone block or the bricks they being used and machinery uh, was the technique. So, they put uh, the bricks one by one in the mortar bed and then they create this kind of structure. Now, next to that is uh, uh, another kind of uh, compressive structure is your barrel vault. So, in barrel vault normally uh, uh, it is something that um, you can say that this is a stretch arch form. So, uh, previously we have seen uh, that arch it is a compressive structure. So, it will have a thickness and then if you try to stretch it. So, basically that will give you another like what we can uh, say that hollow semi cylinder kind of form. So, suppose uh, you just have a cylinder okay, uh, hollow cylinder and you just cut it like this or maybe like this. So, whatever the form you will get is basically your barrel vault. Now, here also as because it is having similarity with your arch. So, the transfer of load through compression. So, whatever the load applied on it, so that will be transferred uh, to the support. So, normally it is being supported by uh, some wall, some load bearing wall and all normally being used for making corridor and used as a rooftop uh, in many of the buildings. So, a continuous arch shape or maybe the stretch arch whatever uh, you can say in this that may approximate to a semi cylinder in form. So, we are talking about this much as a semi cylinder and it is being supported to the wall. Typically formed by a series of arches, yeah definitely it is a continuous series of arches that is making this form and it is the um, uh, compressive structure on that nature. Now, if you see that how beautiful uh, uh, you um, beautifully you can use that and here also you can see some ornamentation, but looking at the point of uh, the construction. So, it is again being supported and to this particular you know beam and then being you know this uh, you know support. So, now uh, the advantage of creating this yes, you can create some span and definitely you know this is one of uh, the vaults type that we discussed barrel vault, but there are other kind of vault where you can um, like uh, use to multiple such barrel vaults to form a different kind of vaults. We will also have a discussion on the vault section. Uh, one particular lecture will be on that uh, aspect. So, then we will see that how different kind of vaults acting together, but considering the compressive full like maximum of the you know structural component which are dealing with the compressive force. So, barrel vault is one of them which is extended arch form and then that transfer the load to the support um, in uh, where there is no tension or uh, maybe very uh, you know minor tension somewhere where it is being attached or closed. 
Now, that was one example uh, with many structural ornamentation, but if you see this is uh, another uh, example of uh, that vault where it is very nicely been done by the architect where you can create a very smooth and a very good span management you can do uh, with application of the barrel vault where you can simply you know make something like uh, you know hanger kind of support or something. So, that can give you this uh, you know advantage of putting this. So, the compression uh, is the main uh, force which are taking care of. And now, come to the uh, other category that is the dome. So, earlier in the vault what we have seen that is extended the series of arches they form that barrel vault and here it is basically uh, a hollow semi spherical structure, but it uh, we can say the evolved from arches. So, what is evolved? So, if you have one arch okay, and you axis, so you just give a rotation, okay. give 360 degree rotation of this string. So, it will basically give you okay, the multiple arches starting from each other. So, it will give you the form of this dome and as because uh, you know the basic fundamentals with the arch that we started with uh, this discussion uh, you know in a previous slide. So, there the main uh, you know uh, the load is of compression type. So, here also it is the same, but uh, in this case what uh, as uh, I tried to mention that when you have this dome. So, uh, whenever you uh, take this you know uh, maybe diagonal uh, you know stress. So, in this case it is in compression. So, they are trying to get very close to each other. So, in this case if you see that this is compression, but at the bottom they will try to go out from each other. So, in their hoops the tensile force being developed. At the top when this particular hoops are try to get close closer. So, compression takes place here. So, in this case dome if we uh, just take as example. So, majority of that is basically the compression, but slightly definitely at uh, the you know circumferential hoops they are taking tension in that. And at the top where they are close to uh, together, so then circumferential hoops they are taking your compression. So, this is again a very useful structure, but earlier when it was uh, used specially for uh, making a small you know heart or a rooftop, but now uh, because of you know some improvement in the material then use of the steel as reinforcement. So, this expanded at, uh, like in a big structure. So, not only to cover a you know top of any particular room or part of the building, it is basically can cover the whole lot of building or the entire area and create beautiful column phase, uh, columnless trays on that. So, this is another example this is basically a gymnasium for a school where you can see uh, that you know RCC dome how it is being uh, used to cover a huge pan. You can imagine taking this as reference of the car width this is a huge pan being used. And it is not uh, the case like uh, being used in the present day, but also we have seen this kind of use of dome uh, in the history. So, this is basically the example and this is very rare view. Normally, you know I have referred this building specially, but not this view most frequently. So, this is basically the um, you know Pantheon from Rome. So, in that if you see that from outside. So, again it is giving uh, this particular form of the dome which is being uh, constructed taking some good framework and the you know concrete was used to make this dome. So, this is again uh, another good example of the compressive structure. So, here uh, it was used in the Roman architecture and the earlier example that I have shown you. So, this is in the modern age definitely. Uh, the earlier one only with the compression or you know compressive material with the concrete only, but here the steel use of steel and the reinforcement uh, you know made it successfully you know implemented um, for the purpose. 
Now, if you just uh, make a summary quick recap, so what we have learned that compression is basically uh, it is acting to the main or major axis uh, where the load applied to it, okay, this is the base and then load applied to it is basically try to compress it, try to crush it. Whenever you have uh, like um, a short column or something where the considerably your length of the column is not that much bigger than the cross section, so crushing will take place and in place of that if you have a larger height and compared to the base then buckling will take uh, take place and then based on that also we discussed about the different types of comprehensive structure. So, we started with wall, then the arch, then the stretched arch as vault especially uh, the barrel vault and then we also discussed about the flying buttress uh, being used in those gothic cathedrals uh, churches. So, basically uh, these are the type where again I am saying ki, uh, the load they are taking the major component of this kind of structural system are taking compressive load that is why they are categorized in this comp uh, compressive structure group. And last but not the least uh, that we discussed about the dome and depending on the material and the technology uh, we can uh, also vary the span of the dome where mostly it is taking the compression, but definitely at the circumferential hoops they are taking tension as well. So, here we uh, conclude this particular lecture and these are the starting materials that you can go through and also you uh, can go through those uh, website links that I have given in respective pictures. So, study more about that and uh, can give me some feedback on it. So, next we will be discussing about that inside structure uh, where uh, again like similar to the compressive structure. So, here also the structure will discuss mostly they will be taking tension uh, either they will take uh, like a little bit compression or no compression. So, uh, we will be discussing that in the next lecture and thank you uh, all for taking part in this particular course. Music